exactly 31 minutes after six time for me to tell you what some of the newspapers are reporting this thursday morning uh, i'll start with the chronicle newspaper on the front page of the chronicle we have prime police land sold for private developer to put up shopping mall offices being transferred to ada and other places this is a big story uh, full details on page three donald trump's courts making front page in ghana i wonder uh, terrorists are targeting media houses that's also another very scary headline on the front page of the chronicle newspaper we turn attention to the back page uh, karasi duncan gets stars call up Injured are you out of Afghan qualifiers? Uh, Avram Grant rubbishes call for local players dispensation. Now let's get on to uh, this terrorist issue about media houses. That is scaring me right now even as I sit here. A uh, story put together by Inu Samusa and Chris Chum says... Chairman of the Board of Directors of Media Foundation for West Africa has observed that media freedom and freedom of expression have been complicated by the emergence of terrorism. Over the last uh, several years, he recalled that countries like Niger, Mali and Nigeria have been afflicted by terrorism and their insurgents of the terrorists have spilled over into Chad and Cameroon, both neighbors of Nigeria in the east. Mentioning recent experiences of terrorist attacks in Burkina Faso and La Côte d'Ivoire, uh, Eddie Dian Ojo explained that the incidents of these terrorisms have implications for media freedom, freedom of expression, and governance. Uh, I, I haven't read the full story yet, but just uh, the first few lines. I don't know if the headline is not scaring us. Uh, it's as if they're targeting the media houses. Uh, but this story about police, uh, prime police land being sold, that's also very major. A little bit about it in the Chronicle. It says that in faraway Bogatanga in the Upper East region, the newly appointed Inspector General of Police, Mr. John Kudalo, uh, like his predecessors, was assuring... Um, he was assuring his subordinates that their accommodation problem would be the topmost priority of his administration. But back home in Accra, prime lands being occupied by his junior and senior officers were being whisked away by greedy politicians. So what is known is whether the former Agri Memorial Zion Secondary School old student is aware that his men in the black uniform would soon be thrown out from their accommodation. Uh, okay, so this is more of commentary and also uh, straight news mixed up. You can read the details uh, if you find it interesting. That's it for the Chronicle newspaper. Let's do the Daily Graphic now. Front page of the Daily Graphic, passport applicants seek answers to shortage of forms. Also, Justice Dennis Ajay exonerated. Be alert, don't ignore minor breaches. Owners of public places engaged cosmos launches project to transform agri a little bit of all the front page headlines in the daily graphic in a bit back page cosmos launching project to transform agri uh, the full story is on the back page uh, but let's go to page 16 and let's share a bit of the passport story with you uh, your comments are also welcome on whatsapp 0560800000 Page 16, inside the Daily Graphic. It says that confusion is reigning at the passport office in Accra following the halting of the sale of passport forms at the commercial banks. Frustrated prospective applicants have for some time now been trooping to the office daily to seek answers to the development. But conflicting explanations have aggravated the already tense situation and apprehension continues to grow. Many people have been moving from one bank to the other in search of the forms, either for the renewal of old passports or the acquisition of new ones, but to no avail. Visit to most banks revealed that the forms were in short supply. The banks visited were the Spintex Road, Medina and Tema Community, one branches of Ecobank, the Medina branches of Fidelity Bank and GCB Bank, and the Labadi branch of the Agricultural Development Bank. So what's your own experience with this uh, passport forms not being available? If you've got feedback, let me know. And uh, there's this other story of Justice Dennis J being exonerated. It says that a petition for the removal of Mr. Justice Dominic Dennis J 
as an appeal court judge for corruption has been dismissed. President John Mahama has endorsed the recommendation of the Chief Justice, Mrs. Justice Georgina Wood, dismissing the petition as its court does not disclose a prima facie case. Details of that in the graphic. Uh, and let's touch a bit on the security issue, which is more like the biggest issue in Ghana today. It says that security chiefs have started a series of engagements with members of the public, particularly owners of public places, as part of efforts to raise the consciousness of Ghanaians of potential terror attacks. And on that security issue, I ask, how are you personally protecting yourself? I mean, how aware uh, are you of your immediate environment and the people that you come across? And what would you do if you came across something that you thought security personnel should know about? Let me know on WhatsApp. Uh, le let's review the Ghanaian Times newspaper, the stories on the front and back page. Fugitive's passport is fake. National security rights Two times, and that story is on page four. EP Church wishes for cordial ties with Global. President to address Scottish Parliament. Ghanaians told to be vigilant. Jida overspent budget allocation by some 1,000%. These are the headlines in the Ghanaian Times newspaper back page. What begins on a front plane's assembly block? Mosquito nets as curtains. That's a question, but it comes with a picture of the health minister. So what is it about, really? Let's start off uh, with a little of the details uh, the, with the front page headlines. Let's go to page four now. Uh, let's talk about somebody's passport being fake. Uh, OK. So a story says that the national security says the British fugitive arrested by the Bureau of National Investigations on drug-related offenses had in his possession a Ghanaian passport originally issued to Mr. Adams or being a student of Takrade Polytechnic. A letter from the National Security Council Secretariat yesterday signed by Colonel E.W.K. Nebo, retired and addressed to the Ghanaian Times. So the passport was issued on November 13, 2009, and that meant the accused, David McDermott, was holding a falsified document, and this has engendered another investigation all together. This issue is not going to die anytime soon, okay? Uh, but you can read a lot more details on that. Yesterday, I think we spent a bit of time on the EP Church, Koma Ghana, and EP Church of Ghana. Uh, and there's a, a story on the EP Church wishing for cordial ties with Global. That story on page 17. So a bit of that as well. And it says that the Evangelical Presbyterian Church of Ghana has said the ruling by a whole court ordering the Global Evangelical Church to return property it seized from the EP Church should not weaken the cordial relationship existing between the two religious bodies. We hope that they will do what uh, they would be preaching to others to do. This is a court ruling. Just abide by it. Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. I mean, this is something that's happening right here on the earth. So let, let the, the evangelical, evangelical, please do what you have to do to EP and let's move on with our lives in peace. But I'm curious about this mosquito issue. A uh, story says that some beneficiaries of treated mosquito nets are using them as curtains instead of sleeping in them amazing some things happen only in gh so others in the fishing communities are using them for fishing whereas those in the farming communities are using the nets as barricades to safeguard their seedlings this came to light at a malaria sensitization work for journalists in a cry yesterday organized by hope for future generation which is an ngo all right, let's do the Daily Guide newspaper, front page of the paper. Bukum Banku victims speak out. Doa Jahu is president. Mahama and Misa Atta out. Sada blows 5 million uh, Ghana CDs on block machines. That's another story. Uh, so uh, let's talk Bukum Banku now. Where's the story? Uh, okay, so story says that the three ladies who suffered brutalities at the hands of Brian Makamoko, a.k.a. Bukumbanku, who is currently on police bail, have narrated a story of sheer uh, British conduct on the part 
uh, of Bukum Bank. So you can read the story. Uh, Eunice Na Odako Lamte, who is 30, Charlotte Na Dinswa Dodu is 21, and Beatrice Na Tre Dodu. Uh, they are still nursing their wounds after their ordeal. So the details of this is in the paper. Uh, the, star, the Sada story says that the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority is in the news again following the expenditure of close to 5 million Ghana cities on block making machines. The hydroform interlocking block making machines numbering 50, which are said to have no commercial viability, are said to be locked up in a warehouse and they cost the taxpayer close to 5 million Ghana cities. There's a lot of rot happening. You can read the details about uh, on it in the paper. Okay, hopefully you don't get any headache after that. The Business Finder newspaper, that will be the last paper, and then we'll look at uh, some news portals. Front page, GMPC waste oil money, unable to recover some $122 million. Uh, true states of economy outs on Monday and bad loans hit 4.52 billion Ghana CDs. Uh, so this story about the GMPC says five years after oil production, the misuse of the Ghana oil, Ghana's oil revenues and the lack of transparency and accountability in the award of oil blocks among others are denying Ghanaians the full benefits of oil resources. So the 2014 Auditor General's report has made damning revelations of financial irregularities at the State Oil Corporation, the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation. And according to the report, the GMPC in 2013 advanced some 50 million US dollars to the Ministry of Finance, an amount which was expected to be repaid in three months but has not been paid back. Uh, there's another story that says that banks' assets. Uh, quality in 2015 deteriorated as non-performing loans increased. Okay, there's a lot more details in the Business Finder newspaper. I will do some messages on WhatsApp and then also bring you what some news portals are reporting. We'll start off with myjoyonline.com. Uh, this one says, Mavi, please, Safeway Tilapia has refused to pay us our money. Ask government officials what they're doing about it. And that's from Bernard. Uh, Bernard, I gave you a message. Thank you very much. Uh, this one says, good morning, where's Roland? Okay, well, Roland isn't well this morning, so uh, he's gone to the hospital. Please say a little prayer for him. Uh, Rachmat uh, says, I think the security of the country should be intensified. Uh, you people make my morning, keep the good work, and we say thank you for always watching the show. This one says, so, uh, good morning, you guys are doing a great job. I want to know what trending would teach us validation. Hmm. All right. Uh, good morning, Mama. I want uh, to urge Ghanaians to let their votes speak uh, their hearts, because the increase in crude oil is really uh, affecting our lives. Thanks. And that's from Hyrule from Boko. All right, thanks for that message. Customers of credit unions should stop blabbing and calling on the president for the wanted abnormal profits, and that is the consequences of taking risk. That's from Roger uh, Wojo in Navarongo. Now let's look at uh, what's happening on myjoyonline.com. Okay, uh, so this is an opinion you can read, but let's get on to uh, some other stories. Mahama gets honorary law degree from... Aberdeen University. Also, Gomez, uh, BDC's increased fuel prices up to 5% Thursday. Okay, uh, this was Sena M News, but let's share a little more of the details with you now. Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana has announced an increment in fuel prices at the pumps starting today, Thursday, March 7. The chamber says the hikes are in response to a rise in crude oil prices on the international market. A statement issued by the chamber explains activities and movement in world market prices, which have gone up in the past two weeks from below some $30 per barrel to over $36 dollars per barrel uh, as of Wednesday has resulted in upward adjustment of pump prices across the various BDCs as the bulk oil distribution companies uh, you want to have your say on this issue let me know we're uh, live on Facebook as, as well we'll bring you 
uh, some of your views on Facebook and then on WhatsApp. But let's continue uh, with some of the headlines here. Posterity will be kind to Mahama. The chairman of the Tema East branch of the NDC has said posterity would appreciate President John Mahama uh, sterling initiatives under the transformation agenda. We move on. Uh, Zuma friends offered ministerial jobs. So South Africa's Deputy Finance Minister has confirmed report alleging that he was offered the position of Finance Minister by a member of the wealthy and controversial Gupta family. That's some South African business right there. Uh, as Zuma Nelson unveiled as new Goyal Ambassador. Congratulations to him and let the oil flow. Issa Director urges Mahama to stop fights over Ghana debt figures. Uh, no Dunso despite a terrible shutdown soon. That's according to the Power Minister. So the Power Ministry has assured Ghanaians that measures are being put in place to prevent the country from being plunged into darkness as a terrible gas plant is to shut down. All right. Uh, you can click on any of the stories you find interesting and read uh, more of the details. There's this, this other one here, uh, which was trending very much yesterday, uh, that says, Red Sec must be given powers to execute murderers. Uh, a story attributed to the former president, Jerry John Rawlins. Patrick Gomez kindly opened it up for me. I want to share a little bit of it with my viewers this morning, but let's get on to WhatsApp uh, and see some of your messages. Good morning, Mama V. Uh, thank you for the good work. And Ro, uh, okay, you and Roland are doing. Please, you update us on weather report on Joy News Prime. I'll be very happy if your news crew would do just that for us. So, Bright from uh, Dodo Amam from in the Volta region. Thank you very much for your message. This one says, Good morning, Mama V, please. I want to know why the officials working on the teacher's salary arrears have gone so silent on the issue. And if you have any news on whether the validation team will be coming to hold today for the validation of the document. I do not have such information yet, but of course, I'm going to find out. Uh, this one says, I like you and your news broadcast. I hope you're grateful to Jehovah. Uh, good delivery, God bless you. It's from Honorable Alukwao uh, in Jura. Tumintum. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. I hope I did well with the names uh, in the message. This one says, uh, this is from Michael Amini. A uh, good friend in the UK says, any terrorist attack of Ghana, it's, uh, it is President Mahama who should be blamed because he has been most vocal African president who has been standing on international platforms condemning terrorism attacks. Ghana is totally naked in terms of combating terrorist attacks and President Mahama will not keep quiet for Ghanaians to live without entertaining any fear of terrorist attacks. That's your opinion. Uh, this one says, Mahama and Roland, please never fear these terrorists because God is with you everywhere and who knows that might be your righteous moments. That's from Rexford in Tamale. Rexford, I feel assured. Okay, a bit of this story uh, attributed to the former president, Jerry John Rawlins. It says that former president, Jerry John Rawlins, uh, foresees more politically motivated killings unless parliament passes a law that will empower regional security councils to execute murderers. Speaking at a meeting with representatives from the family of murdered a Baco North member of parliament, J.B. Dankwa Edu, the former president noted that the MP's murder happened because past politically motivated killings have not been punished. All right. Uh, so you can always log on to myjoyonline.com and read a lot more of the stories there. Uh, this one from Benjamin, who is watching the show from Sunyai, says, uh, I'm very disappointed that none of your phone lines I called was received. Okay, so I don't know the number that you've been calling, but we sh maybe we should put some numbers out so you can get in touch with that if, if you're uh, trying to reach us. This one says national security is far above party colors, tribal, regional, religious affiliations. Ghanaians must understand that national safety and security are a collective responsibility. I think Africans, as do the rest of the world, have to be security conscious more than ever before. May God help us all. That's from Daniel Cabo, McKinney City in Sierra Leone. And on that note, I'll make way for Benedict Owusu Dankwa to come and play back the scores for all the Arsenal fans who are watching the show this morning. So pick up a big pan 
and let the tears start dropping in. Sports is up next. <laughs>